This chapter will set up a kangaroo definition that will help us recreate mathematical minimal surfaces, like Costa minimal surface, in mesh form. It is similar to the mesh relaxation exercise covered in Module 2. Minimal surfaces in mathematics is a surface that locally minimizes its area. It is equivalent to having zero mean curvature. You have probably seen some of them, like the Costa minimal surface, Schwartz minimal surface, Chen Gakstata surface, gyroid, among others. This family of surfaces exhibit a harmonic balance achieved from what looks like a single surface twisting and bending to create these complex geometries. Minimal surfaces have gained interest from the design community and have been adopted by modern designers like Frey Otto, Robert Engman, Robert Longhurst, and Charles O. Perry in their works. For this exercise, we recreate the Costa minimal surface in mesh geometry. Let's understand the workflow before we begin building the definition. You may open the grasshopper file provided in the resource folder to follow along. We start by creating a low poly mesh model representing the general morphology of the final output in terms of openings and naked edges. The low poly model is subdivided for a higher face count. Naked vertices are anchored to the desired target curve which in the case of Costa minimal surface are the three circular edges. After defining the anchor goal, the mesh is relaxed using the edge length goal, and we get the minimal surface. Let's start building the definition. First, we create the low poly mesh model. A simple Costa minimal surface has a circular edge at the top, middle and bottom. Start by drawing an octagon representing the middle geometry, followed by one square at the top and one at the bottom. By using these polylines and connecting faces between them, we can create the low poly mesh model. This time lapse illustrates how each mesh face is modeled. It is also available in the exercise file. While modeling the mesh faces, it is important to ensure that the vertices and edges are coinciding. Else, the mesh will fail to join correctly, and we end up with unwanted naked vertices. You may set the O snap option to end and vertex for this step. Once the faces are modeled, reference them into Grasshopper Canvas using the Mesh Container component. Use Mesh Join, Mesh Weld Vertices, and Mesh Unify Normals to join the faces into the Low Poly Mesh. Use the Refine option to subdivide the mesh into quads. Set the level to 3. Test the resulting mesh for any unwanted naked vertices. The subdivided mesh should not identify any internal vertex as a naked vertex. If it does, then check the Rhino model for modeling errors. 
This clean and subdivided mesh is the base mesh for kangaroo simulation. The second step in this definition is assigning goals. Let's set up the show and edge length goal on canvas and connect the base mesh to these goals. For anchor goal, we will use the naked edges to identify the anchor points. Use mesh edges to isolate all the naked edges and join them. In this instance, we get three polylines from the join curves command. Explode these polylines, and we get a list of naked points with three branches, each representing one naked edge. Resulting list of vertices contains duplicate points at first and last index. Cull index 0 from vertices list to remove all duplicate points. For each set of naked vertices, we need a set of target points which falls on the target curve. To create the target curves, compute the average point of each set of naked vertices, and use the resulting point as the center point for circle. For radius, we compute the distance of each naked point from its respective average point, and use the largest distance as the radius. Use the sort list command to sort the list of distances, and extract the last item from the list. Use these sorted distance values as radius, and we get the target circles. To identify the target points on these target curves, we need to do three things. First, we need to adjust the seam or the curve's start point based on one point from each branch of the anchor point list. This point will be the same point that gave us the furthest distance from the center of each circle. Second, we need to align the anchor points as per the direction of target curve. And third, we need to divide the target curve as per the number of anchor points. Sort the anchor point list using the same sort component used to determine the radius. Connect anchor points to values A of sort list component. Reverse the output list of values A, and extract item at index 0. Use curve closest point component to find the point on target curve that is closest to this point.
Use the seam function to adjust the start point of target curve to the closest point. Connect the circle output to curve input of the seam function, and parameter output to the seam input. Use the resulting curve to sort the anchor points using sort along curve component. These sorted points are the list of anchor points to be used with anchor goal. Use list length function to identify the number of points in each branch, and use that number to divide the circles. These resulting points are the target points. Connect the anchor and target points to the anchor goal. To ensure the order of these point lists, use the line command to visualize the targeted connections. Merge all goals and connect them to Bouncy Solver. Enable, and reset the solver. Use list item to isolate the mesh from the list of outputs. The resulting geometry is the mesh version of the Costa minimal surface. With this grasshopper definition, we can use multiple variations and combinations of the low poly model to get different complex minimal surfaces. The exercise file has some low poly models that you could plug in as initial mesh input, and get various exciting results from the definition. This one, in particular, is more architectural in form and can be imagined as a large span space or large hall of some sort. We use this Costa minimal surface model in Module 4 to explain the strip morphology workflow and grasshopper definition.